ever wondered how lovers sent notes thousands of years ago, or when engagements became celebrated with the exchanging of rings. Surprisingly enough, many modern ideals actually have their origins in ancient times. Welcome to a day in history where we'll be investigating the ancient Egyptians and their remarkable romances. Yeah. Marriages in ancient Egypt were often arranged to strengthen connections between families or for financial advancement. All the same, romantic love was still important to Egyptians and celebrated in poetry from the age. The Chester Beatty papyri date from 1200 BC and show a speaker praising the beauty of his lover, which demonstrates the idealized form of beauty at the time. She radiates perfection and glows with health. The glance of her eye is gorgeous. Her lips speak sweetly and not one word too many. Long-necked and milky-breasted she is, her hair the color of pure lapis. The speaker refers to this woman as his sister. This does not mean that they were related, but rather was a term of respect and esteem for women. In fact, marrying one's family members was frowned upon for most of the population, with the exception of the royal family, to preserve bloodlines and royal lineage. Gives a whole new meaning to the phrase, sisterly love. One of the most famous pharaohs from Egyptian dynasties was also renowned for his romantic love match. The young Tutankhamun, who ruled from 1332 to 1323 BC, was married to his half-sister, Ankesanamun. Images from ancient art reveal their devotion to each other. She is frequently depicted by his side, hunting and offering him flowers, and their hand gestures and facial expressions show genuine love for each other. Tragically, their love was cut short upon his death at the tender age of 18. Egyptian marriage ceremonies were somewhat casual in comparison to today's lavish parties. They were often arranged between parents with reciprocal gifts between households and set up for the purpose of setting up connections and having children. Both the groom and bride's father would draw up marriage settlements, which were signed before witnesses, at which point the women would join her husband's home. Couples were expected to show respect and love for each other, revealed in ancient marriage guidance from viziers like Tahotep, who said, Love your wife, feed her, clothe her, and make her happy, but don't let her gain the upper hand. Another Agni uncle, Ani, offered this advice for a happy marriage. Don't boss your wife in her own house when you know she is efficient. Such scribes suggest that women had some degree of power and influence in their household. The royal family were free to choose to marry whom they wished. They were even encouraged to keep it in the family by marrying siblings, half-siblings, or cousins. Incest was not an ideal for the rest of the population, where citizens were encouraged to marry outside of bloodlines. Marriages took place at an early age. Girls could be as young as 12, and boys 15 or 16. By this point, boys would have been trained in their father's profession, and girls were taught to manage a household by their families to prepare them for married life. Once you were married, you were expected to remain married for life, and your bond would continue into the afterlife. Although life expectancy was low, many men died in their 30s and women could die in childbirth in their teens or early 20s. Tomb paintings and inscriptions reveal that couples looked forward to eternal happiness and companionship in the field of reeds. The Egyptian belief in eternity was not a paradise, but rather a continuation of your life on earth, so you were encouraged to live fruitfully and happily in your marriage. Egyptologist Margaret Bunsen notes that, Eternity was an endless period of existence that was not to be feared by any Egyptian. Unless, of course, you were not a fan of your spouse. This ideal of eternity also inspired one of our most common engagement traditions. Allegedly, the ancient Egyptians were the first civilization to use rings to commemorate the joining of two people in partnership as early as 3000 BC. Back then, rings were formed from hemp or reeds braided in a circle. This symbolized eternity for the Egyptians, while the hole in the ring center suggested a doorway to the future. Rings were worn on the fourth finger of the left hand, which we know as the ring finger today. Egyptians, as well as other ancient civilizations like the Greeks and Romans, believed a vein, the vena amoris, or vein of love, connected this finger directly to the heart. If an Egyptian man placed a ring upon his wife's finger, he was demonstrating his affection for her and his belief that she would look after his home and possessions well. Over time, reed rings were substituted for more durable and valuable materials like ivory or leather, demonstrating a man's wealth as well as the value of his love for his wife. 
Of course, such arrangements did not always end so happily, in which case ancient Egyptians turned to divorce. To break up a marriage in ancient Egypt, either spouse could ask for a divorce, and their possessions would be divided up amongst them. Except in cases of infidelity, a woman was entitled to keep her marriage portion and to take her children into her care. There was even the option for the equivalent of alimony payments, where a husband would continue to pay his ex-wife a monthly amount until she remarried. In the later New Kingdom, divorce proceedings became more official and a central authority became responsible for deciding who owned property and how each spouse could be supported. In cases of adultery, things could get ugly. There were no real taboos around sexuality amongst the ancient Egyptians, with the exception of adultery and incest. Homosexuality was not prescribed against. Indeed, it was believed that the pharaoh Pepe II, who ruled from 2278 to 2184 BC, was gay. Basically, the ancient Egyptians managed to be more accepting than some people today. Unmarried women were permitted to have sex with men, and there is evidence of contraception being promoted in the Ebers Medical Papyrus of 1542 BC, where women are told to use a mixture of dates, honey, and seed wool to prevent pregnancies. The fact that there was no word for virgin in ancient Egyptian suggests that it was not a preoccupation for their civilization. However, married women were expected to remain faithful to their husbands. Several moral stories about unfaithful women warned men to mistrust adulterous temptresses. The tale of two brothers, written in 1200 BC, may have inspired the biblical tale of Joseph and Potiphar's wife. Brothers Anpu and Bata lived together. Anpu's wife tries to do the dirty with her husband's brother and then accuses him of rape, turning the family against each other. Interestingly, there do not appear to be equivalent moral tales for men. Perhaps this was because of the need to legitimize children under marriage. A man could therefore be assured that his children were his own and his property was safe. The king was allowed to have as many wives as he wished, as could any other wealthy royal man, showing that men were not subject to the same rules. Or it could just be the bias of male writers. Punishments for suspected female adulterers were severe. In one case, the woman was burned at the stake outside her home as a warning to others. Another brutal disfiguring punishment was rhinotomy, the amputation of the nose, which marked out the adulterer to the rest of the population. Inspired by ancient romantic antics? Don't forget to subscribe to our channel where you can learn more about the wonderful and weird parts of the past.